All right, welcome back, everybody. It is Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. This is the second broadcast of 2024. And, uh, well, welcome back, everybody. It's Mob Vlog. Hey, everybody, grab a coffee and cannoli. It's time for Mob Vlog with my friend Adam Flowers and Red Wamet. Mr. Red Wamet, how are you doing today? I'm cold. <laughs> you made it through the storm. Whew. Yeah. It was a nasty storm. You had tornadoes all around you. Yes. A couple you. days ago. Not only that, uh, well, on the 8th, it was, uh, there were 70 mile an hour winds and they were just tearing everything up. I'm mean, things were rolling down the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. My neighbor, my next door neighbor lost their house. <laughs> their you, house got the, uh, you got the National Guard out there too, huh? Yeah. It's a uh, curfew from uh, sun, uh, sundown to sun up. Yeah, you were breaking curfew last night. No, I didn't. <laughs> we're on the air, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome in. Devious Leto. Nice to have you with us. I've never said that name before. Devious Leto. Uh, Bobby Bag of Donuts, Brady, Tommy Bridges, Timothy Foster, Sonny Zaro, Leanne, uh, Dave Grimp, Jim, J Jim Yeager, uh, Frank Ferraro, welcome in, guys. Philip Wright, Scott, it's nice to have you with us. Tom uh, Cause finally made it. <laughs> what's that? Tom Cause says he finally made it. Nice, Stacy. There you go. You finally made it, Tom. Good. Welcome in, Tim Hunt, Luminous Grin, Robert Murphy. Everybody's here today. Scott H. Scott H. was on the tour with me yesterday. Scott, you're watching. I know you are. Thanks for dinner, buddy. It was really, it was, that was nice, man um actually it wasn't yesterday it was the day before so it was but it was fun nice to see you again scott he comes through here every year red and uh yeah it's always nice he went and did the crime tour with us and some, some new viewers that uh live here in town that uh that also watch it tom thank you so much for the super sticker buddy that's uh awfully nice of you we do appreciate it cynthia casanova good afternoon it's nice to have you in poised for duty all right, Joe Mazza, all everybody's here. Endangered species even make it. Go USA and Bill Crawley is also with us. So, <laughs> nice guys. Hit that like button, smash it. It always helps the algorithms. Rhonda, it's nice to see you uh, as well. So, Sean Pender, good to have you with us. Sean's down there from uh, the south side of Chicago. I got this book right here the other day, Vegas in the Chicago Outfit. The Skimming of Las Vegas. Look at it. It's by Al W. Mo. I don't know who Al W. Mo is. No publishing house. No publishing house. It was made in the back. It says Moni, Illinois. Made in Moni, Illinois. And uh, and my buddy Don Weiberg, he sent this to me. I've known Don since I was probably 13, 14 years old. Uh, he came and watched me do magic at Lauren Zetti's restaurant in Calumet City. It was one of the first memories of Don. He's a magician as well. He performed. For Ricardo, and <laughs> you got at their house. Yeah, he did a, a, a magic. Him, him and some other guys were did a show together. He wrote wrote it to me in a note. Anyway, he said he's not sure about the accuracy of this book. He sent it to me to read, but look at this right here on page eighty eight. There is a picture clearly of Red Sam Giancana. That correct, and it says underneath. That this is a picture of Tony Accardo. <laughs> okay. That was a picture. No, 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 I the the book. That was the picture that was taken at O'Hare Airport. Well, I mean, if they put the glasses on Tony and on Sam, you, they kind of you put the hat and the glasses. I mean, it's it's just it could be a little confusing, I suppose, but they definitely got that wrong. I don't know who Al Mo is, but anybody else uh read this book or see this book i don't even know where where you can where you can buy it if there's something don found around chicagoland or what the deal is so uh i love adam and red and adam i love adam and red and and adam this is awesome tim hunt we love you <laughs> i love adam and red and adam that means he loves me more than you red because he said twice, my yeah. Twice. yeah see so <laughs> Home and Sanders. Wow, how they mixed that up. I don't know how they mixed it up. So Adam asked Red to let me out of chat jail. He put me in on Ignore for some reason on his channel. Who's poised for duty, Red? What'd they do? 
I don't remember, but oh, oh, he, Red put him in jail. If oh. I put him in a timeout or whatever, it was yeah. he said something inappropriate. Well, must have, I guess. Book is on Amazon, Gary Mashinsky. You can get it on Amazon. Last book I read, I got left back. Last book I read, I read, R-E-D. Last book I read, I got what? left back. Uh-huh. I don't know what the hell that means, Ultra Cowboy. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, I have no clue what the hell that means. Mickey Griggs wants to know where he can get the book. Yeah, you guys should go on Amazon and get it. Check it out. Uh, John P., it's your lucky day. I'm a close relation to Ricardo. Let's How close? Yeah. close? Welcome in. Um, all right, so, Brad, the topic today, what we're going to talk about, obviously, the Chicago outfit, but let's get on with this. We're already six minutes into the show, and all we're doing is sitting here kibitzing. <laughs> so, what these guys do before they were bosses of the Chicago outfit, guys like Ricardo, for instance, wasn't there the 42 gangs? Wasn't that where it all started? Uh, Ricardo was part of the circus gang. They were all street gangs. They were oh, all oh, circus yeah. gang. Yeah. I've never heard of the circus gang. Well, it was back in the day. It was in the early 20s. Okay. So they were like the 42 gang? They were a bunch of uh, teenagers? Yes. Okay. Preteen. Uh, yeah, teenagers. 13, 14, something like that. Okay. Pay them to go do bad stuff. Oh, yeah. Or you didn't have to pay them. They'd do it. <laughs> they sure. Were people doing everything they could do. Sure. Pay them to do bad stuff. Oh, yeah. And what would you do? I mean, you pay them to go beat up somebody. You pay them to go. Or should get their lunch money from school or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, well, well, Frank a lot of used to say, I mean, he used to muscle kids for his milk, the milk money. Yeah, yeah, you had to pay for milk at school. Okay, so here we go, guys. We're getting a little information from our uh, viewers. Homan Sanders, Circus Cafe, I think. Gomph, the circus was a bar they hung out at. Is That's that why they called them the Circus Gang? That's correct. Aha, uh -huh. thank you very much. So now we get a little further where they got their name from. Because the 42 Gang had a reason they had the name the 42 Gang. Correct. Which they came started. later. They came later. They were... So we're talking the 42 gang. We're talking like the 40s, 50s? Uh, earlier in the 50s. They were back in the 40s. 40s? Yeah. Okay, but circus gang, you're going back to 20s, 30s. Oh, yeah. They were oh. pretty. Actually, Sam Giancana was a member of the circus gang. Or, excuse me, of the 42 gang. A lot of those guys came out of the 42s that we know about. Okay. Um, but uh, before that, it was like, Paul Rica, all those guys, they were part of the small gang. That was Al Capone recruited them. Okay. Um, guys, be sure to hit the like button if you're just coming in here. If you're new to the channel, hit the uh, subscribe button down below. Uh, red, red over, red over here. <laughs> red over here. He was a porno king in Chicago. Right. <laughs> Abe Froman, the Sausage King. This is the Porno King right here. Red Womet. Mm. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> um, no, Red, Red ran a bookshop in in, in, in uh, Old Town and was getting muscled by the mob and knew, knew people like Marshall Caifano, uh, Frank the German Schweiss, Tony Spilatro. So that's, uh, that's it. Lombardo, the is in here. The Avenue crew. The truth, Adam Flowers, Red Wilmette. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, glad that you're uh, glad you're sticking around and uh, and, and participating and having fun here. Uh, beer chunks and gravy, endangered species. What the hell are you talking about? Beer chunks and gravy. What does that even mean? We, we didn't even start talking about food yet. We didn't even get to the food part of the show. That's usually at the end. Is that the guy I knocked off my channel? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't know. I really don't. Beef chunks. Sorry. Beef chunks and gravy. He he misspelled it. Beef, not beer chunks. Beef chunks and gravy. I don't know what that means. So uh, that's BS. Word from Chicago. We can handle this. No, I don't know. Okay. I what What's going on in the comments today here? Art Kelly. Thankfully. Here we go. 
Hello, gentlemen. Who's this Californi jabberoni trying to muscle in on Frank's idea of success? Real jack off. You mean jag off, Art? It's a jag off. Art's from California. It's okay. He, he can. It's a jag off, Art. And on this channel, anyways, people are jag offs. <laughs> <laughs> we know who you're talking about. Yes, we talked about that last week. Bigfoot Turkey. Did the Chicago mob mainly come from Sicilian stock? It's not no. necessarily true. No, it was the first place. Uh, actually, Chicago was the first place to have uh, people that were Polish, Irish, uh, Slovakian, Irish, a big yeah. Irish uh, faction. Sure. Sure. It wasn't just had to be. That's old school. Thing. What was that, was it? New York. that was New York. Yeah. Yeah. That was New York. So endangered species, nasty bookstore. And I read he used to stand there by the door when the people would leave and he'd hand them little handy wipes and say, thanks for coming. Come again. This is why I bounced him. <laughs> Are you going to bounce me now? <laughs> it's all right. Um, oh, boy. Okay. Al didn't discriminate. Uh, we're talking about Al Capone. Didn't discriminate. No, you wanted to you wanted to be part of it, and you proved that you could do what you would do and say you would do what you said you would do. That's what you were in. Um, you got to ask yourself, though, something like these guys. Somebody is willing to pop somebody's tires on their car, for instance, okay? For bucks. <laughs> what would that person be willing to do for a thousand bucks? Yeah. And what would the person be willing to do for ten thousand dollars? Because if somebody has that mentality that they'd be willing to do something like that for money, then they're obviously the show of their character is really fucked. I mean, and that's saying it nicely. You got to agree with me on that's that. That's a that's in our view. Their view was okay. We can use these guys. <laughs> we, we need munchkins. <laughs> I know, right? It's just it's like um, all right. That's that's what you want to do with your life. That's what you want to do. You know? I. I don't know. It's also good to note that none of these people had a high school education. True, right? So, poised for duty. Adam Red has become a prude in his old age. <laughs> You're a prude now. Okay. You're a prude. No, Red's out, not out there peddling the smut anymore. He's does good things now with his time like <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i have no idea barry lewis great show glad you're enjoying it my friend um alan b money is money if you earn it consistently for the outfit you were in italian polish german etc sure why That's not right. if you're an earner they aren't going to turn you away why you know this question comes up why didn't they kill lefty rosenthal they knew the guy was they made uh, money yeah i mean if you knew the guy was I he's, he's an earner. He's an earner. If they knew he was an informant, why didn't they kill him? Because he's an earner. I always yeah. suspected that uh, after he went down to San Diego, he was still kicking money to somebody. Really? Oh, yeah. Mickey Griggs Jr. I popped a few tires back in the day. Dude, the worst I did was let some air out of a tire once, okay? I didn't even pop it. I just let the air out of it once as a prank, okay? Because we were all doing stupid shit when we were kids. And, and I sell it somebody's air out. All they had to do was pump it back up. I never damaged anything. I did. But not as a kid. It was later on in life. Um, right next door to me, I sold a building where the gay bar was in. Yeah. And they used to have nude swimming in the swimming pool. It was above ground pool. And it was right outside my dining room window. And it upset a lot of people that came over to my house. So I went down there one night. I took my K-bar with me and I shoved it through the metal part of the pool and just ripped the whole pool and flooded everything. K-bar. K-bar, it's a combat marine knife. It's a knife. Okay. Combat knife. Gotcha. And you and you sliced their pool? Through the metal and all the way through the liner. And it flooded everything in the neighborhood. And I'm talking to this guy. Listen to this guy. I'm He's talking out, to this guy. No damaging people's pools. Yep. Oh, my God. Terrible. Um, I believe they burglarized. Let's go smooth operator. 
I don't think we've ever had smooth operator on here. Maybe we have. I believe they burglarized the smaller Accardo home. Let's talk about that. The burglary of the Accardo house. How many guys died over that? Remember? It was actually the larger home. It was the bigger one? Yeah. Where was that located? What city? Uh, that was Forest Park. Or, excuse me, River Forest. River Forest. River Forest. Um, did Frank have any stories about the outlaw police in Vegas and their antics during that era? Did Frank have any stories about the outlaw police? I, I like how they say outlaw police. The outlaw police, as if they were outlaws. They're the police. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they were outlaw police. They saying, oh, he's got a murder gun. It's not a murder gun, okay? It's a gun. It's... <laughs> It's like here's a murder rope, you know. You could kill somebody with it. The uh, the outlaw police. So so Bigfoot Turkey. That's a funny name, Bigfoot Turkey. Uh, yeah, yeah. He had he had he had stories about the police and what they did. Um, shit. Our consultants for the crime tour. Well, he's got stories too, man. Times were different though, you know. Times were different back then. People didn't go deep on the police. They actually respected the cops. They were afraid of them. They were, they were afraid of them. And most cops were big dudes. You it's not like that anymore. <laughs> uh, you can't you can't can't hire somebody based on how big they are. <laughs> really, because if you want somebody fighting the bad guy, don't you want the big guy? I want or, the winner. You know, when you're in a fire, right? And you get somebody's gonna come in and save your ass. Don't you want the guy that can pick you up and I carry want you? the biggest, I want the biggest Fuck the guy I do. I want the biggest dudes coming dude, to get you. Throw me on his shoulder, take me out. Damn right. Yeah. I don't want some little fucking tiny per and I know we have female firefighters watch the channel. I'm not trying to diss any of you. Please don't take it that way. I just it just seems to me, and, and, and I'm sure there's a place for everybody, and not everybody has to run to a building and you know. Uh, and, and carry people out, but you know, it's like it's, it's you know, it's this DEI crap, okay? It's this DEI crap, and I, I love this. I was on uh, X the other day, and uh, and Mark Cuban went on this big rant about how DEI is so important and shit. And Elon tweeted back to him, was like, or posted back to him on X, said, "Oh yeah, so when are we going to see a five foot four white Asian woman on the Mavericks?" Good fucking question, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Good fucking question, Mark. When are we going to see a fucking little white Asian woman on your fucking basketball team? We aren't. It's not going to happen. <laughs> fucking it. Hip hypocrites. Fucking them. hypocrites, Red. Michael Graham just explained this by actions. <laughs> Let's slice the gay bar swimming pool. So instead of a bunch of naked guy, gay guys swimming... Red got full view of naked men standing in a nude, empty pool. LOL. <laughs> you improved your view there, Red, didn't you? Actually, I wrote about You're my hilarious, book. hilarious, man. I wrote about that in my book. <laughs> oh. uh, John P., back to the Accardo house. It was Calabrese Sr. killed all who robbed Accardo's house. No, it was Nick, Nick um, Calabrese and Sr., and boy, they got all the burglars, and I didn't know they were hitters then. Yeah. Oh, uh, Miss Can't Be Wrong. Little Miss Can't Be Wrong. I'm five foot one. Give me a big dude. I don't know how you mean that. I'm not, I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> she meant it a nice <laughs> way. <laughs> there you go. Like, I mean, you want a big dude, and big in what way? Miss Can't Be Wrong. Julie M's got something to add here. I had to pass the same physical test. Here we go. Julie M. She's the one. She's the one I was for. Julie, Julie don't be upset with me. No, she's a, she's a good gal. I had to, oops, I had to uh, pass the same physical test that the male firefighters, which is the way it should be. It should she, be. She, she, she was an EMT. She, she was an EMT. So. No, she's still the same stuff. Hey, Roy, we're on air right now. Do you think that do you think that firefighters should be big big guys to come pick your ass up and carry you out, or do you want a small person? I, I want a person that has demonstrated the physical aptitude performance test that can carry you know a, a full size male out of a building. 
Okay, so they have to fit. They just have to pass the physical test. The same one, right? Yeah, the same one, not a, not some cheesy ass lowered one, you know. Not a dumbed down one, but a real yeah. one. So if Julie yeah. M could pass the test, that's all good with you, right? Yeah. I don't care, but it better be the same test that all the others are held to. Yeah, there you go. And you could tell Royal he works in the corporate world just by this answer that he's given here, Red. <laughs> you can tell he's he didn't want to say the wrong thing, but that's the complete right thing to say. Um <clears throat> Well, it's the right thing all around. Okay, I it agree. Matter. I agree. If you can if you can perform, but you, you know, you don't you don't make it's like pilots. Okay, pilots. Well, should pilots have good eyesight? Uh, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> Point to we say, well, we should have blind pilots because they're, you know, we shouldn't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a blind pilot. So, I don't. I don't want one that's colorblind. You gotta take it to the extreme. Is where would it stop? Yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. So, I, that's why job descriptions are written the way they're written. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. We're going to bug later? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go home and work a little on my lovely snow blower. <laughs> oh, you got to uh, fix you that know, thing. That, that he's, in, gonna kinda, he's in Chicago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're supposed to get 15 inches of white stuff on Friday. Oh, God. Yeah. God bless you, guy. <laughs> hey, Red just went through tornadoes in Panama City the other a couple nights ago. Yeah, he spins and I get drowned in snowmen. Yeah, and it's uh right. and it's it's like in the forties in Vegas, so I'm cold. So I'm wearing this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll send you a violin. <laughs> Drive me a river. See you later. Okay. Bye. Hey, Oops, sorry. <laughs> he said hey Red. I heard Roy by accident there. Thanks, bro. All right, guys. So when Ocardo was taking the fifth on TV, he seemed very meek and not what you would imagine a mobster was like. Was it an act? Is he more with it in real life? Man. He was, his lawyer would talk to him every so often. He was a frail old man. Just a frail old guy at that point, huh? No. Were you friends with Al Capone? I knew Mr. Capone, but we weren't really friends. That was his kind of answers. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. Those were his. I thought you were talking that you knew Al Capone. I'm going, no. what? You told me this before. Another Johnny Russo story. <laughs> How fucking old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Older <than> dirt. <laughs> um. Okay. So, um, a woman in a firehouse full of dudes is a bad idea. I agree. Ah. Uh, you know, it used to be all male police officers. That's why they called it policemen. When I was a kid, it was the policeman and the fireman. And now, now it's now it's PP, police person. <laughs> police person, police officer. Police person. Firefighter. Firefighter is also a a, a, a um firefighter is also a rank. So when you say you know you're a firefighter, you'll be a firefighter, but then you'll be an engineer, you'll be a lieutenant. You'll captain you could you know so i think that that's kind of broad too firefighter but so well emts are different that's a different classification also julia i beg to defer jj why do you think it's a man's job only here we go they're getting they're getting hot in the comments here comes. and he started some oh, this is go julie <laughs> <laughs> uh women in the firehouse read about it in the news what the does that mean uh, Accardo was screwing with all the senators. He knew how to mess with them. That's what it was. Yeah. Giving vague answers and whatnot. Guys, be sure to hit the like button if you're just coming in. And, uh, you know, yeah, be, be sure to hit the like button. Timothy Foster. I think women can do anything a man can do and vice versa. Uh-oh. Okay, Tim. So this is where I'm going to have to disagree with you. Me too. All right. A man cannot do anything that a woman can do and vice versa, and, and a woman do anything a man can do, okay? Men First, don't have children. Biologically, let's start with that. Biologics, <laughs> biologically, a man cannot have 
and birth a child. Just can't. And a woman cannot impregnate another woman. A man can impregnate a woman, but a woman cannot impregnate a woman. So no, there's some pretty basic things. Now, as far as it comes to physical and mental agilities and whatnot, that's a different story. Um, I'm not going to say that, uh, I mean, hell, you know who won Miss Nevada out here last year? A man. A man did a better job at being a woman than a woman, <laughs> according to the Miss Nevada contest, all right? So, okay, not to give birth, I mean as far as occupation goes. So, Tim, again, I got to disagree. Can a man be a prostitute? Sex worker? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Can be, right? Yeah. Okay, I guess I guess that there's a there's some I guess it's called a gigolo, right? Gigolo. That's what I wanted to be when I was a kid. Gigolo. All there, are the gay oh. there are gay oh. prostitutes. There's gay. You know all about that, don't you, Red? It was all over me, all over my store. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Julie, it's a man's job. I'm sorry, it just is. <laughs> JJ's not going to back down on this one. I think it's funny, you guys. Michael Let's Graham. Michael Graham. <laughs> Chicago the police department needs to get back uh, to the old standards and hiring only men at dykes. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. What the hell are they talking now? They're not all police officers. There's just no. Come on. Scene. There's just no. No way. Vicky Tabiri. Hi, Adam. Just saw you are live. I was trying to see if we are related. Antoinette sound familiar. Antoinette doesn't sound familiar. But Vicky, you asked me if I was related to John Flowers, which I have a father, had a father, John, and I have a half-brother, John, as well. So um, maybe be. we are. I, I don't know. Maybe that helps. You know, you can get on Ancestry.com. My DNA is up in there. So you can find out if you, you know. It'll tell you if you, if we're kin. I Bigfoot uh, Turkey. I did not work in a porn shop. I owned a porn shop. <laughs> he owned a porn shop. He manufactured a drug called Rush, which was some kind of inhalant that people used. And uh, what else did you do? You produced some make. stuff too, yeah. I never make. <laughs> um, I did all kinds of things. Um. Uh, let's see here. What else we have yes you're right it's a fireman when i grew up tim hunt that's what it was it's just golf so uh the true oh do bad do bad that's a new person timothy oh so they can uh woman can knock out a male heavyweight in the ring very good there's another, occupation. There's another one that's not gonna work you're Mark. right do bad you're right that's an occupation that i don't think that a woman can do that a man can do salute me. so ron roos for years, during the 60s and 70s, a fire department was in southern Utah was an all-female team in the 60s and 70s. And were they all married to the same guy out there, Ron? Because <laughs> of the Mormon thing, Red? That was a joke. You're supposed to laugh. They okay. get him wives and then anyway. So, uh, Sean Pender, the Chicago uh, police chief in the Heights, was also a hitman back in the day. You know, but nothing better than a police officer hitman. Look at that Lou Apolito and uh, Caracappa team out there in New York. Yeah, Stephen Caracappa and Louis Apolito. Oh, yeah. Gambinos killing people. Huh. Crazy. They got 100 life sentences, both of them, to be served consecutively. If that idiot Lou didn't write his book, Mafia Cop, the whole damn thing would have never happened. They would have never gotten caught. But All right, Julia. Well, I did everything the men did. Wow, JJ, we are a little sexist. Huh? There are many men that I could wipe the floor with. Julie sounds like a freaking badass. Then she can know. kill him afterwards. She's, <laughs> she's a nurse. <laughs> yes, I wouldn't want to mess with her. No way. No way. Bigfoot Turkey wants to know, did the Chicago mob traffic in porn, Red? Yeah. I did? Yeah. Okay. I facilitated that. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Red Womet, the porn king of Chicago. <laughs> Wrote a book about it. <laughs> I didn't because porn king. That's Adam. <laughs> Rhonda. Rhonda said to Julie, Julie, you're my hero. 
Haven't met a man yet that can outride me. <laughs> okay, Rhonda's the Italian cowgirl. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I still call them firemen and policemen. I didn't pay attention to the crazy feminist, JW. I... I said postman. I still try to say postal worker when I'm doing tours. I try and clean up a little bit of it. But I was raised with postman. And when the postman's coming, it usually was. I mean, this, this, things are changing. What can you say? Vicky Tiberi. Um, okay, let's get back to my relationship with her. Uh, Vicky Tiberi. Would I have, would have been your father, I think. My grandpa would have been terry flowers's uncle okay so your your grandfather was terry flowers's uncle which would have been my father because no sorry terry flowers's uncle hold on terry flowers's uncle so so i don't know which side of the family that would be on because terry was married to bob Anyway, let's, I'm getting confused here. Um, but yeah, that, that would have been, I don't know if she married in and then if it was on her side, that would be, but we'd be like second cousins twice removed or something, I think, Vicky. I don't know how that works. Second cousin once removed or twice, something like that. So it probably are related somehow. In the DNA somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So crazier was taking action jobs, acting jobs as a mobster after. Uh, no, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No lady mob bosses are there. There were. Red, go ahead. Who was the one, uh, that famous one? Ma something. Ma Barker? She wasn't the Ma mob. Ma Barker, there you go. Ma she Barker. Was she, wasn't a, she wasn't part of the outfit, though. There's no the outfit bosses that were, were even outfit workers. Yeah, there were outfit workers. Estelle was one of them. But um, there was no outfit bosses that were um, uh, female. No, no. Associate people associated madams and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um. Okay, John McShane. He just popped up as a mobster in the movie State of Grace. Lou Apolito did a couple of movies. All right, he was in Predator Two as a security guard, and he was in uh, Goodfellas as Fat Andy. When they walked through the restaurant, Fat Andy was there and loose. Hey, that's Lou Apolito. And that's who's who's Fat Andy. Um, I didn't know he was in State of Grace. I gotta look that uh, I gotta look that up. State so, of Grace was a very good movie. Yeah. The truth, Red. I bet there were huge weirdos coming through your shop. You know, Jeffrey Dahmer came through your place cruising for guys, didn't he? I said, yeah, he did. Man, Red knew Jeffrey Dahmer. I did not know him. <laughs> Another ding to the red flag. <laughs> All right. Um, my nephew is a fireman, endangered species. All right. Um, I, I, you know, why not? So Don Cheech, Sean, give me his initials. Oh, you guys are talking in code over there. Um, Let's get back to the mob. Uh, no, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay. Are we? And, and Adam, his own grandpa. Adam's his own grandpa. What the hell does that mean? I'm my own grandpa? Am I that old? No. Trying to get the, that old look. You got a ways to go to catch up to me, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> catch up to you, there's no way. Uh, any info on how Al Capone came up with the name The Outfit? We've talked about this before. Because the military... And also, he was in a meeting in New York, and he said, my outfit, not my family. Right. My outfit. And he called it his outfit, like a group of soldiers were in an outfits. There was outfits. and They were all saying, my family, my family. And he said, my outfit is this. What is uh -huh. that? Smoking a cigar. All right. Um, Ryan Brown. Griselda. Who's Griselda? Who was she, Red? A madam. She was a madam? Yes. And where did she, where, in Chicago? Yes. Yeah, Ryan Brown, you are, you're a, you're a walking encyclopedia of crime. We uh, love it. The truth, the truth said it is an encyclopedia of cr crime. The truth also said that I'm a class act. 
thank you. Um, <laughs> Vicky Tabiri, Don, I'm originally from South Holland, but I have families over there. Oh, you got the Dutch old wooden shoes over there in South Holland. You know, they don't even have uh, liquor sales in South Holland. It's a dry, uh, dry city when the, I think on Sundays. Couldn't buy it. Uh, Griselda, I, I, now I know who he's talking about. This that was Griselda was the uh, uh, she was a uh, uh, Zelda Blanco. It's Colombian, yeah. Colombian, yeah. She's the Colombian drug, and that's a that they got a TV show about her, Griselda Sofia Vergara. I remember watching her in the news years ago in the nineties. Ah, she was vicious, man. Hmm. Huh. That video, Joey Lombardo being chased through the mall. Amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Miami cartel. There you go. Miami cartel. So we were connected to Chicago because Miami was underneath Chicago. Yes, it was. I mean, not just on the map, but literally. Graphically and, and authority wise. Right. It was considered uh, an open city. Yeah. Do bad. Big fan of the show, fellas. Awesome. So are we. Um, <laughs> speaking for everybody, John Calca Calcagno, YouTube guys couldn't carry a hot dog across the street without dropping it. What? YouTube guys couldn't carry a hot dog across the street without dropping it. I don't know what the hell that means. But speaking of hot dogs, Red had a beef stand, Italian beef stand, and come Lent, everybody makes pepper and egg sandwiches and that's what i made two two mornings ago i made pepper and egg sandwiches my wife never had one before adam called me and said red how do you make a pepper and egg sandwich what do you do with yours you know what i mean like i want to look what do you do with yours what kind of seasonings what kind of stuff you know and uh it's good i looked up with several recipes as well be sure to hit the like button guys uh if you're just coming in man we got a lot of people on facebook right now oh yeah I, yeah yeah more than normal so that's it's a good thing so welcome in guys griselda killed hundreds according to tom coe's more deadly than frank schweiss yeah she was wow and she did it herself no she, she, had, other people do it. she had other people do it but she I, spent a hundred thousand two hundred thousand for for a murder no I'm, I'm i'm gonna be checking this out uh I'm going to be checking this out. I don't know what it's, it's It's a biography. It's a one season. It's a biography about her. It's a Netflix series, guys. Three hours ago, she was a drug queen. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'll tell you to tune into that. That looks like fun. Did you see Sisu? It's on um, Prime, Amazon Prime. It's called Sisu. S-I-S-U. It's John Wick meets World War II. Fucking great, man. <laughs> Uh, great. All right. So, everybody calm down. Let's watch some uh, awesome content. Do a video of the sandwich. I totally should, Brady. It's uh, It was good. It's really, I should make a video of it. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, Bigfoot Turkey wants to know how many smokes you have a day, Red? About 10. About 10. There you go. Could right. be 15. I smoke more when I'm on the air than off. Oh, okay. Gabe Ortiz. I've known Gabe for seven, 18 years almost. I've known Gabe. Found it. YouTube. What? What is this? What did you find, Gabe? Um, I can't even. I can't click on the link and make it work. No. What is this? Um, don't know. I'll check out the link though afterwards. Jillian Monroe, sliding in late to chat. Hello, guys. Happy New Year. Uh, Jillian Monroe, nice to see you. Welcome in. Happy uh, New Year, Jillian. Happy New Year's, yes. Uh, okay. Don Cheech. Sean. P was a sergeant. They killed him around 1962 behind Kipriani's on Stink Road. Stink. That can't be right. Stink. On um, where the hell would that be? I have no idea. Who was a sergeant? P. They're talking in code, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think it is. All right, so, um, Stink Pot Road, Stink Stink Pot Road. I, you guys are talking about what the hell are you guys talking about? All right, Tommy Bridges. Griselda had a lot of hits she wanted carried out. Price tags like fifty k, a hundred k, one hundred fifty k. Her main hitman was George Ayala. 
He's still in prison. Yes. Really? Yeah, he went to prison. Uh, he never thought she'd give him up, or she did. Huh. Um. God. This the is... Truth, the truth, I got a kick out of my smoking. <laughs> did you ever bum any cigarettes from any wise guys? No, but they did for me. Ah, they smoked OPCs. Oh, yes, always. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could tell you a few stories I heard about Albert Toko and Billy Dauber. Vicky. She has Albert, some stories. Taco. Albert Taco. That was just Chicago Heights. Yeah. He was at the he was one of the, the guys that was uh, Barry and the brothers, Spalatros. Yes. Yeah. El Toco. Wow, is she still working? I could use a job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, were wise guys scary, Red? I never found them to be scary. But you just find the things that they did to be scary. But personally, as a person, I never found them to be scary because they weren't angry at me. Well, that's what to be about. Tony the Ant, Jillian Monroe. They called him the little guy, not the ant. Yeah, yeah, not. not the... I don't know where that ant, the piss ant. I think it, it was it came from Bill Romer. It came from Bill Romer. Was it Bill Romer that started that? On the air, and he was talking about that little pissy ant. Yeah. They wrote about him in the newspapers out here, too, called him a piss ant. They also, Frank Collada said that he thinks that maybe the, the feds and wiretaps picked up on the ant because Tony is also Anthony. And Anthony, Anthony. short, is, hey, is ant around? Yes. So that's also could have been where part of it came from. So That's part of it. A blast from the past in my mind. I cannot believe this. Jimmy Rittenberg. From Faces, still alive. Still Jimmy, alive. Rittenberg. Jimmy Rittenberg. I'm sure he remembers me. Who's Jimmy Rittenberg? Jimmy Rittenberg. Uh, actually, I think he was the original owner of Faces, originally on the license. and um, The nightclub. Faces, yeah, it was Rush Street. Yeah. But he also went out to Fox Lake, and uh, he did a lot of things. Nice guy. Huh. Right around. Thanks for the super sticker there, guy. Uh, one of, look, I sound like Red. Thanks for that, guy. <laughs> one of Griselda's hitmen mistakenly killed the son of an intended target. She went wild and said, that's wonderful. He was so disgusted with her, so he flipped. Yeah, she, he also, she also wanted to kill a child. That was in the car. There was a, a, a drive-by shooting. Oh, she, so the hitman killed her. He said, oh. no, we're not killing the kid. Oh, that's terrible. She was, she, 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 oh, God, what a twisted woman. And she I, said, I, oh, I really got to watch Griselda. Griselda. Son, so why not your son? I know what I'm watching tonight. I'm going to start Griselda. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely. Sherry Gould, holy shit. Adam Flowers, how the hell are you? I'm doing wonderful, Sherry. It's nice to see you. Sherry Sherry uh, worked in Chicago. I don't know if you're still in the union. Uh, she was in the union, and uh, she dated my best friend who passed away a couple years ago. And uh, Sherry helped me with my magic act, too. So that was uh, back in the back in the day. Sherry, it's nice That's to see you. from your past. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Wow. Nice to see you. Glad that you're. I uh, hope you're doing well. Anyway, I see your uh, your Facebook page. I've I've looked around a bit and saw that you think you think you got married anyway. So, congratulations and I uh, hope life's wonderful. Um, still a pipe fitter. Terrible loss. <laughs> oh shit! She got my buddy Paul a job as a painter, and Paul he just Paul's a trip, man. He had fake work. He had fake this that. It was he's funny. He was funny, and he got a job as a painter. Sherry got it the job and he quit his first day they yelled at me they were telling me i wasn't working hard and <laughs> i had to go pick this dude up at the train station <laughs> oh shit he walked off the job his first day anyway so it's good to see you uh how old was marshall when he uh, passed away red he passed away in 2003 huh? and he was born in 1911 92 92 years old. Wow. Made a long time. Yeah. 92. Whew. I met like, him when he was um, in his 60s. He was 68. 
He was 68 years old when I met him. Wow. Um, made it uh, made it a long... Uh, oh, he had a long life. Yeah, it's a long life. Same as the uh, car, he had a long life, too. Jillian Monroe, Ruthless Woman. This is Griselda was. Listen yeah. to this. She had a small man complex sort of thing. Felt she had to overdo it because she was a woman. That's correct. I've got to go. I've got to go watch this. It sounds really, really interesting. Um, Endangered Species. What's up, Sherry? Glad you're here. Endangered Species knows Sherry, too? Interesting. All right. So um, everybody hit the like button or else. Yes. What? Old Marshall died in prison? No. No, he Marshall, was out, right? Marshall did not die in prison. He uh, actually died uh, in Miami, and uh, they shipped him back up to Chicago. Something rare or odd about Marshall was they actually put him in a child's coffin. He was only five feet. Are you serious or are you shitting no, me? That's a fact. They put him in a little coffin? Yes. Because he's a little man? Yes. I guess that makes sense. I mean, they save money. When they bury a big, big, big fat guy, they got to get a piano box and shit to put him in, you know? So you've heard of that stuff happening. Oh, yeah. So why, I guess that's all right. Enough of that. Um, so social media could be, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm so hoarse I could draw a wagon. <laughs> Social on media could be on the wall. Can you draw a wagon on the wall? <laughs> <laughs> Social media could be a good thing. I found my childhood babysitter from when I was three years old. She remembered me after all those years. It was awesome to reconnect with her all those years later. How oh, Ryan, how the hell do you even remember from when you were three? I as far back as I can remember is like maybe three. Mom I can talked talk about her. her. Talked about her. I crawled down the stairs backwards in my diapers to my grandma's and the shag carpeting was so thick in my tiny little hands and the, the fur stuck up way beyond because I remember it, how it looked to me when I was a little kid. And then I remember going to the door and eating ginger snap cookies and eating, drinking tea with my grandma downstairs. That's the earliest remember that I could have. Before that, I was covered with all this like strawberry jelly. Red. That's a joke. I know. Oh, God. All right. So, welcome <laughs> to Chicago. <laughs> oh, at Mob Vlog, Adam, Ryan Brown brought up Griselda. Please thank him as soon as possible. No, I have. That's all we're talking about. I, Ryan is a, is this walking encyclopedia of, of, of information. He is. He's an encyclopedia of information. It's crazy. He's got a ton of ton of information so uh child vault too cheaper they put them in a child vault in a small in the mausoleum oh. no. okay that's going a little too far alan I, that didn't happen <laughs> did you know tony montana read no never didn't even know about him until about 2016. okay okay no um, <laughs> the true breath of fresh air. Thank you, uh, the truth. And Ryan Brown thanks you as well. So we're going to be talking about stuff that was invented in Chicago, manufactured in Chicago that you don't see anymore. Um, we're going to do an after party today on Red's show, and so you guys, uh, so you guys are aware. You're going to find it very interesting if it's you turn. Be interesting. We we were talking about it last night, going, what are we going to talk and we looked up a few things and I went, this is interesting. I didn't know this or this or that or all this crazy shit like zippers being invented. And I said, oh, yeah, I know about this. I yeah. said, you did? I was like, oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I was one of the guys that invented it, you know. <laughs> right. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, pinball? No. No. No pinball. We're not. We did a whole episode on pinball and. Uh, it wasn't invented in Chicago. Yeah, we did the whole games and and coin. It was coin operated uh, machines in Chicago is what we were. What we did an episode on. So it was a good show too. Uh, it was. 
Bigfoot Turkey, can you imagine what it was like for a Chicago cop to find a folded up murder corpse in the trunk back in the day? Crazy. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. They would take filters off of cigarettes and put them in their nose oh. when, they, when they popped the trunk. Oh, As a matter of fact, I, I walked up to one car one time when there were police there, county police, and they were actually sniffing the trunk before they had opened it. Right. Because it had been sitting there too long. John McShane, correction, Adams committed two crimes, mispronunciation of names and telling jokes. Really? Really? Uh, that's not a crime, guy. Give me a I break. I read the other day. I said, Red, don't take your teeth out and throw them at your car because you might dent your car. Dent <laughs> <laughs> your car. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Whatever. Red didn't think it was funny either. It's terrible jokes. They're, they're awful. I thought it was funny. God horrific. It just took a while to sit in. I like my teeth. <laughs> um, why would they break the? Why would they break off cigarette filters instead of coming with the appropriate masks? Why they didn't they give them masks in those days? And Scott Air Packs. They didn't even give them rubber gloves in those days, or surgical gloves, or whatever. What's Scott stand for? S C O T T self contained oxygen transportation system. What 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 does Scott Air stand for? Somebody's got to know this. I'm sure somebody knows this. Scott Air. I know scuba is self contained underwater breathing apparatus. That's what right. scuba is. But Scott Air is something else. It's self contained something. So Jim Magnifici. Adam tells dad jokes and he's not a dad yet. What's this yet shit, man? <laughs> What's this yet? <laughs> the the yet. best. I'm 46 <laughs> years old yet. Shoot. Red, what? What? Uh, Red, what d days were these? The 70s, 80s. What days were these? Oh, when they broke off the, 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 the cigarette filters. What was it, 60s? No, it was in the 70s. 70s? Yeah, the 70s. And uh, the eighties, early eighties. Oh, I remember uh, when they found Johnny. Well, the uh, Johnny Catuso's body when they found him after the uh, with uh, it was in a Volvo. They found the car, and they were they were sniffing the car before they popped the trunk. Really? Oh yeah. Um, Scott Air Scuba self contained. What does Scott? Air, air stand. Right. Maybe I'm fucked up. Busting your chops the whole time. No, no, no. I think I think I I think I might be. Maybe that Scott doesn't stand for it. Scott Air might be the company. Scott uh, Air Pack. Um, anagram. Is that what it is? No. No. SCBA self-contained breathing apparatus. Scott seventy-five. You guys are right. I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. We all knew that, though. Michael Graham says he, he was a police officer. I never responded to anybody dead in the trunk of a car, but my partner and I did find a woman stuffed into a duffel bag behind her. A behind her shop at Ogden and Western? What? Yeah. Oh. Oh, God, man. Stuffed into a fucking duffel bag. And they had they had the guys on the wagons when they did get them, they would have to go and pull them out, and sometimes they came out in pieces. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Yep, that's enough. We don't need to get any more gruesome than that. Anyways, we got to go talk about things that were invented in Chicago and made in Chicago over on your channel because uh, we're coming to that time. Scott is a trademark name from 3M. Thank you very much, Bill. Minnesota. So, um, self-contained breathing apparatus. Scott's the brand. Julie M, you're correct. Yeah. She, no, she's a firefighter. So I was going to say she's a fireman, but she's not. She's a firefighter or was. I don't know which. I think you're retired, aren't you, Julie? Maybe. Yes, that was her rank, I believe. It was? Okay. Um. Whoa, whoa, whoa. As you know, the FedEx logo contains an arrow and a spoon. What? It's got an arrow. What about the spoon? I don't see it. 
There's an arrow in white between E and X. It represents quickness, precision, and pursuit of excellence and tenacity in the face of adversity. Jesus, did you hear that? That's what that arrow represents? All of that? Quickness, precision, pursuit of excellence, and tenacity in the face of adversity. Enough for me, Red. I got to go. We'll see you on your channel. You guys have a great day. It's been fun. And if you come out here to Vegas, be sure to take the Vegas Crime Tour. Take the Vegas Mob Tour. Take the Good Springs Ghost Hunt. Use the Mob Vlog code, 20% off, and uh, we'll see you there. So, Red, see you in a bit on your channel. Have a you great day. Right? See you guys next week. Mob Vlog. Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never before seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he saw. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the dry one. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three course dinner Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit, The Rat Pack is Back show. Experience Vegas the way it was meant to be.